All right, let me see how that looks on my render camera. Okay, so we're, we're getting there. We're not there yet, but we are getting there. As you can see, I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit. Uh, these rays are creating that effect and the fox helping us create that effect as if the light's coming through the, um, the ceiling. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to put everything in high and see how it looks. So see, every time you change this, this, this will change as well. Uh, by the way, I forgot something. I, I'm adjusting the brightness here, so it's usually a 1. Uh, what I did is turn it down to 0 0.6 because I don't want it to be too bright. Uh, also, I forgot to turn on my ambient occlusion. Very important. So now that I got all the, um, all the sorts of light that I want, I'm going to start adjusting the fog a little bit and see how... How I can work that to my another thing that I'm going to do is put this in a folder because this is a bunch of stuff that I don't want to see in my outliner. Call it lights. And we're going to start um, fixing things. So Oh, just by the way, one thing that I was forgetting is, as you know from our previous videos, I like to use the Filmic Tone Mapping. So I'm going to actually turn that on right now because I'm going to be adjusting the brightness. And that, whoops, that has to do a lot with, um, with the Tone Mapping because it really changes your scene. As you can see, it, it makes it more contrasty. So we're going to go back to the fog and let's start playing with it. See how dense we want it. So as you can see, moving the slider of the lights is actually making the fog react to the lights that are falling. I like that this light gives us like a vignetting effect. The thing I wish though is that we could group things and affect all the lights instead of having to go manually because this, this could help in setting up something like this. And it took me a while to set up that scene just because there are so many lights in the scene. But again, I'm just trying to show you guys how to get this kind of underwater effect that I had in the beginning. So I'm just turning down the brightness on all the lights. And as you can see, one of the things that I wanted to do with those lights was uh, create a focus on this portal. Which is what I'm doing. And as you can see, I'm trying to get all the lights actually shining. I have to get some lights over here just so they shine a little bit of water on everything. But I want them to also shine on the portal so they kind of highlighted my portal over here. So we're going to go back to our camera. And we're going to start adjusting some of the colors. 
So we're good with the exposure. I don't think we need more of that. Um, I am going to play with my curves that I usually do. So this this gives us a little bit more for more lighting. And one other thing that you can do, uh, if you want to give your scene a certain look, for instance, we're now underwater. So what I'm going to do is the exposure. I'm going to tint it blue-ish. And this is going to help with setting up the mood of our scene. Okay, I'm actually going to save that color. So this is something very useful that we have here. So if you have a specific color that you liked, and maybe you need to repeat that, which is what I did with like the stones and the floor, just to make sure I had the same color all around. What I did was you click on save and your color will be permanently saved in one of these slots in this scene in particular. So that that does help a lot. Um, what are the things we're going to do? We have bloom. Uh, increase the grain in this one because we're underwater. Not so much though. And let's see if we turn these one on. Oh, that actually looks very nice. But I want my assets to show. So. Okay, now I'm going to try to rearrange my floating lights, my, my lights in general, not floating lights. Because some of them are not contributing to the overall look of the scene. Back to my render. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens if we add the gel to our general light. Huh. It's just. actually not too bad that's not bad at all Okay, what I'm doing right now, the reason why I turned off all the lights was to um, test the distance because this can help a lot. So I'm going to turn off the UI element so I can see what I'm doing. Three, four thousand. Okay, and I do like that. Let's fix the spot angle a little bit. 
See, because I want to make the the light make it look as if it is a two. Because that's how light kind of looks whenever we are underwater. So because I like the way that that looks, I'm going to delete all these slides and restart it, restart everything. So. Okay, should cancel that. And I'm going to go back to my floating camera. And actually, yeah, let's leave the general light for now. So what we're going to do is start duplicating this. Let's see how that is looking. All right, we got this look right here. Okay, so these guys are actually gonna back to turn all the HUD elements, UI elements on. These guys are actually, they're not pointing anywhere that I want. So what I'm going to do is select all of them. And have them shine on my portal. Oops. Let's go back to render. And there you go. They're shining on my portal, which is what I wanted in the first place. So I'm going to keep on duplicating. I'm going to create several more lights just to complete that part of the scene. Okay. By the way, so to select more than one thing, I'm holding control and click. And control D, D as in Dumbo, to duplicate stuff. Okay. See how that's looking. Oh, that actually looks very nice. It looks way nicer than it used to. So I'm gonna continue doing that. So uh, I'm gonna be quiet for a little bit. Just gonna keep adding the lights. And you know what? What I'm going to do, which would make my light easier, my life easier, is I'm going to rename this folder as all lights. What I'm going to do is get these into another folder called light shafts. And that way I can just duplicate that folder and I have them all together in, in like a group. 